Hi there, thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. I'm Susan McCord. Today's topic is navigating loneliness in your relationship. Are you with the right partner? This question came from one of my subscribers named Carolyn, so I will read you what she wrote to me here. Hi Cyber Sue, I've been married for five years. Things started very passionately between us. We had a powerful sexual chemistry that we both shared equally. We never really had much in common besides the bedroom. And now things have slowed down in that department. I feel a disconnect with my husband. I gave up many of my personal interests and friendships to spend time with my husband and I deeply regret not having stronger boundaries in the early stage of our relationship. Our communication is almost non-existent, so I don't know how to how to even start to change things between us. Is it possible to fix this or is our relationship beyond repair? Thank you so much for any advice you can offer. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Carolyn. So the one thing that's really hard here is when you come from a relationship that started out really sexually active and you didn't have anything else really in common, there's not a lot of places it can go. You can try and keep up the momentum of having the that chemistry that you've had from the beginning, but as we all know, over the years, it dissipates a little bit. Some people are lucky to have it forever, but most of us get busy with other things. It's not as huge a priority as it was in the very beginning of a new relationship. So when you give up other things in your life that you had before you met your partner, it changes the dynamics of who you are as a person. If you're letting go of your independence in any form, you're all of a sudden sitting here going, well, where, who am I? Where did I go? What am I supposed to do now? I gave up all of this for my partner and now I'm sitting here lonelier than I've ever been. And being lonely in a relationship can take a big toll on your self-esteem because you're with somebody and you're not really together. You're living almost separate lives. Sometimes you might end up being living in separate bedrooms for the most part. This is where it becomes very sad because you did put so much energy into this, Carolyn, right from the start. And now it's gone down after five years into this place of feeling as a very individual person in your relationship where you're not having communication with him. And this is the problem with if you don't have outside interests from the bedroom early on in your relationship, you don't learn how to communicate with each other. This is why I always say to people, please don't jump into the bedroom too quickly. Make sure you even like them first. That's a good start. Make sure you have things in common. And the last thing you ever do is give up the part of yourself that you have become over the years. Don't give up any part of you to be with somebody else. You have to be able to work together as a couple. They bring in who they are, you bring in who you are, and if it's a great fit, fantastic. But nobody should be changing for the other person. The good thing, Carolyn, is you wrote me within the five year mark and not 20 years later. And it's quite sad sometimes how many people wait too long to try and repair their relationship. And you at least are trying to make an effort to see if it is salvageable. And a lot of the time it is. The first thing though I would ask you is, do you still love your husband? And does he love you? Because if you both have feelings for each other in that department and you love each other, you can fix things because you care enough to want to fix things. The problem is people let things go far too long before they fix the problem. And then all of a sudden you look at each other and don't know who each other is anymore. You don't even know who you are. And this is where it becomes a problem. We can't always do this on our own. So I always suggest for couples who are going through something as strong as this, this is quite a powerful situation that has changed within your relationship. I would really suggest that you do couples counseling. And if your partner won't go, go by yourself and just find out what tools you can get to help you through this. 
if you are still having feelings for each other and your partner is wanting to go and try and fix it, then you'll do a really, really great thing by doing this together because it shows each other that you want to mend the problem. Because this lack of communication and your lack of independence and not doing things you used to do, that's the problem. That's where the loneliness sets in because you don't have anything else. You had your husband and you put him as the priority over everything else, which is good in some ways, but you don't want to lose that other side of who you are too. So I would also suggest that you bring back some of that independence. Both of you in your relationship have some time apart, go and see your friends, do some of the hobbies maybe you both aren't doing anymore. Bring that back in. Find something you can do together as a couple as well. And just see if you can get things back on track again. Then you've got things to talk about. If you're not seeing anybody outside your relationship, you're coming home, you're watching TV, you're in separate rooms, you're barely having dinner together. How do you ever expect to communicate with each other? It's not going to happen. You have to learn how to talk again. And sometimes it takes outside interests to bring into the relationship that you can share with each other. And maybe your partner might want to try some of those. They might try want to try some of your things. Get yourself back into a friendship as well. Because now that you've lost the intimacy part of it, or as you said, it's pretty slow, you're not getting to the point where you even are attracted to each other because you're not putting energy into you as a couple. You're just living separately. It's very crucial to be able to communicate together. This is what keeps couples together throughout the years of their long-term commitments because they can talk to each other all the time. The problem in the very beginning, you didn't learn how to have that communication. You had a physical communication, an intimate communication, but you didn't have that other emotional bond, that sort of intellectual conversations and all those things that go with you know, having a good time with somebody when you're out for the evening. Those are the things that are really important as you get older because we're not jumping into bed 24 seven all the time when we're older. We want a companionship, a friendship, and somebody that's romantic and loves us and unconditionally. And that's the important part of any relationship. Always remember that love needs to be nurtured. Any problems or things that come up in your relationship should never be swept under the rug. They should be dealt with as quickly as possible because you don't want things to fester and to get worse. And all of a sudden you lose the communication you lose the intimacy, you lose the romance. And that seems to be what's happened here. So let's get this back on track. I would just start to reconnect with old friends, maybe just talk to them and say, I'm sorry about what happened. I got into this too quickly. I wasn't thinking, you know, please forgive me. Can we rekindle our friendship? Find some new friends if people have moved on, join some groups just to get yourself out there. Bring those hobbies back that you used to do that you let go of because that's who you are. And remember, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. It's really worthwhile that you fell in love at one point in your life. You still hopefully love each other now and just try and repair anything you can because it is worth saving it's worth putting the energy in. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day and please subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.